67, 68, right around there. Yeah. Black men have married out their race more than all other men in America put together. Are you going to tell me it's a pure coincidence that the black man is absolutely in love yeah. with marrying his oppressors? It is, it is the validation of they can get a guy from a different culture. That means a lot to people. Romance mm -hmm. is a function of focus and opportunity. If I want to date an Asian, I'm going to put myself around Asian women sure. so I can find one. Sure. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And so, uh, so, oh, 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 we're not going to go there. We're not. I have called me a liar and you're cool. Well, it's a okay. So today's episode, as you can tell from the beginning, will be on interracial relationships. Are they a good thing? Are they a bad thing? What the fuck are they? We're going to discuss them and more. Let's get into it. So I thought I'd start this episode a little bit differently, a little bit more uniquely with a personal anecdote. A beautiful story about my relationships and my own interracial relationships. Now, Dr. Umar, quite regularly, because he's talking to Ish, refers to white and black relationships. Now, I've got to keep it real with you guys. That's never been me. That's never going to be me. Let me not speak too far ahead. However, I can only speak on my experiences. And I have dated women outside of my race, Asian women, South Asian women specifically. Uh, so I thought, you know what? Let me talk about my own experiences of interracial relationships start from there and we work our way down or up however you want to see it i don't know whatever so without further ado let us go so i've dated a few women who have been of south asian descent indian pakistani sri lankan as well yeah i forgot about that and when i was in those situations i don't think it was wanting the white woman's prize or white per white man's prize i should say because I didn't view them as that. They wouldn't view themselves as that. I don't think white people would view them as that. It wasn't about having someone more acceptable to white society. I did, and will be completely honest with you, at the time have some sort of fatigue with black women. I had really only dated black women up until those points. And wanted to try something new. So there was some exoticism. I wouldn't say fetish. I would say exoticism, experimentation, trying to find myself, trying to find what I liked and didn't like. Uh, a lot of them, something similar to what he said, was point of focus. They were people that were around me. They were people that went to gyms with me. They were people that were friends of friends. There was many links and there was attraction there too. And I found that I felt that that was a safer space for me to date people. And I felt comfortable. They were friends as well. However, like I said, it was a part of it. And I have to be honest, I, w I did have the fatigue from black women. I did view at that time black women as ag really and truly, if I'm looking, being honest on myself and looking back on those situations completely and fairly, I think I viewed the black women as ag because my, me, myself, I had unhealed trauma that I hadn't dealt with and I had large communication issues, which were probably linked to the unhealed trauma, to be fair. However, coupled with that with black women themselves having their own traumas, it was just a cockpit for just nonsense. And I don't think I was truly in my masculinity, if I'm being honest, leading the situations that I should have led them the way I needed to. I'm not saying oh, I need to be a leader, but when you're not communicating, the fuck are they going to do? And you can imagine taking that in that context out of that and dating people who are in a different context just because the race changes, I don't find the issues didn't change too much either. Still the same communication issues. I'll be honest, less arguments, Boy, but still communication issues. And I did feel that the feelings of unwanted and not feeling understood were still reoccurring. Re but perhaps even worse, because my race was something of a topic of issue, which had never happened to me before. I was confused. I didn't know how to really take that on board. And I found myself at times feeling resentful, at times feeling confused, at times feeling just disappointed and unloved and unwanted. Damn, feel sorry for me. You a bitch. You know why you a bitch? Because I said so. You just a bitchy bitch. However, I disagree with some things Dr. Umar said, but there were some truths to it. There were some facts that I, I wasn't truly in my own blackness when I was there as well. That was no fault to the women's themselves. Perhaps it was just a topic that hadn't come up 
and it wasn't something that I felt comfortable discussing myself if I'm being completely and frankly honest with you guys. And like I said, my, the topic of my blackness being such an issue made me feel even further disrespected. It's funny that I was running from black women at the time because I felt disrespected. I felt like it was too much ag and I got sort of worse ag dating women outside of my race, but not for the same reasons. Hey, like I said, if you don't deal with your issues generally, you'll find the same issues totally and anywhere you go. That's got to be the main focal point of this. And I have to be honest with you guys, although it may sound like I'm being very critical of these South Asian women, a lot of them are still my friends. A lot of them are still people I'm very friendly with and cool with and are amazing and friendly and wonderful people. So I don't want to make this sound like a criticism of them. It's more of a criticism of myself and my perception of the world. However, I'm not the only guy that I know that has dated people outside their race. So here's some little anecdotes that I've learned from observing and watching my friends. You may or may not have known them. Some of them have dealt with very similar to me, not feeling like they're in their own blackness, not that feeling that they can be their authentic black self. Some of them have felt that they have to pacify themselves to fit into the families in which they are now in. Some deal with many prejudices, whether that be caste, race, socioeconomic, as well as other little discrepancies that they feel on a day-to-day -day basis dealing with these relationships. Now, something I would say, just to play devil's advocate, all the problems that I've described in myself and in my friends could be found in same race relationships. If you're from a different economic standpoint, you could be looked down upon. If you're someone from Caribbean or African heritage, you can also find similar problems, whether you're dating someone from African and um, African, and Asian, Caribbean, and Oriental Asian. It doesn't matter. You can find these problems anywhere. I do think they're exacerbated when they're black dealing with someone outside of that, but they are problems you can find anywhere as well. Another thing a lot of my friends, and sometimes even myself to a degree, faced and felt was that you felt like you were the, op the best option out of a bad bunch. Something Dr. Uma discussed. Number one, it's about a black man being an economic stimulus package to the white woman okay most black men yeah. marry down in class when they marry these white women okay white women and women outside of the black community date men into the black community for economic stimulus packages i hope i said that right economic stimulus packages i would also say status packages i would also say validation as well and i would also argue a lot of men have faced this and have said to me, and we've discussed, that they felt more of a trophy piece in those relationships than an object of love and affection. Something Sadia Khan said about Pakistani women, but I think this can apply to a lot of Asian women in general, is they date a lot of men outside their race because of... It is, it is the validation of they can get a guy from a different culture. That means a lot to Pakistani women. Pakistani women usually grew up, especially when they're younger in the UK, with some level of racism. You know, the white guy wouldn't it be did, interested yeah. in you or whatever it is. And so now that we're, social media has made every kind of ethnicity desirable, when they get a guy, for, or, or an English guy interested, or if they get a black guy interested, or if they get a Hispanic guy interested, even if he's not offering anything to her, she's overexcited by it. And I can echo this sentiment. A lot of South Asian women white women have said that their draw to black men is that they're the ones that pay them the most attention. They're the ones that approach them the most. So they are the ones that they develop the most connection to. And I think some men on the other side, on the receiving side, felt like they maybe they were being chosen because they were the only one willing to go and get them. And it left them feeling, did you want me or am I the best of the bad bunch? That's a deeper question to look in and explore and expand upon. However, it is something that when I was discussing this with friends, they said that this was a feeling that they had. And if I'm being even more frank, a lot of black women would say that they've never really dated outside of their races because a lot of people outside of their race don't approach them. They don't move to them. And when they do, it seems to be bad. It seems to be something very unserious and it doesn't seem to be something tangible to them. So sometimes is it down to just options as well? It's something to look into. It's something to explore. They would. I've also had this from a lot of black women when I was discussing the topic of this episode that they felt more fetishized when they were dating outside of their race as opposed to when they were dating within their race. And sometimes the fetish aspect of it can make you feel like a, 
I think the word I'm going to look for is you feel like a, a trophy, you feel like an object, you don't feel like a person. And that was something I was alluding to earlier about feeling like a figment of something, feeling like a, f- when it's not, when you don't feel like you're an actual person that they are attracted to, they're more attracted to maybe the idea the concept and the things that you offer as opposed to the person that you are. It can be a bit misconstrued because the the things that you offer can often be connected to the person that you are. However, you can and can see and compartmentalize when there is fully focused on what you offer as opposed to who you are and when it's who you are and what you offer. However, the main subject of this seems to be heavily focused on black men dating outside their own race and Dr. Umar's comments were black men dating white women specifically, but a lot of black women themselves have dated outside their race. And I'll just tell you some of the anecdotes that I have written down for you. And a lot of them dated because they themselves hadn't fully realized themselves in their own blackness and were still exploring and trying to understand what they liked and disliked. Some of them had fallen disgruntled and tired of, quite frankly, I'm sad to say it, black men's ways. Sometimes we can be talk to black women and treat them when they are bringing us problems with a lot of disrespect, a lot of defense. Not all the time. Not all. We, we talking about oh, generally speaking. I feel you. Mm-hmm. We talking generally right, but speaking. we haven't tried it enough no. yet to draw that conclusion. No, I disagree. Nah. I disagree. The way I, I see black men engage black Sometimes. women. Sometimes. Yeah, but look, look, look. It's so aggressive, so disrespectful, True. so condescending. That, you are right. And then we get mad at her Both. for adopting Both. the same masculine Both. reaction Both. where she has no choice because that's how you coming at her. And we fail to realize that we're talking to black women who've been raped, been abused, True. been abandoned by their father, had to protect the children. If the black woman does not adopt the masculine pose, it would be difficult for her to make survive. it out here without to a survive. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. Listen, my, my stance on that is, listen, do whatever means. So now that can come from a lot of trauma. A lot of suppression as well. When you've suppressed your own feelings and someone brings you feelings, you can feel completely overwhelmed. However, although that may be a very beautiful and nice sentiment behind it and shows that there's not a lot of malice behind it, it doesn't face and change the reality of the fact that in that moment you are deflecting, avoiding and sometimes gaslighting away from the problems, creating tension and space where you are pulling apart from each other, which left them feeling disgruntled. And a lot, and another one, I'll be honest, was economical. A lot of them had reached a certain economic place and were tired of bringing a lot of black men to that economic place. Sadly, black men catch up to black women a lot later on in life. So they dated for economical reasons. There's a lot of trauma linked to it. These are not just the, the onlys, but these are the things that came up when I was discussing this issue with black women to dis- find out and discern what they really found and what they really wanted when they were dating outside their race. And I'll be quite frank with you, a lot of them were dating white men outside their race. It it was far more diverse, I'll say that that much, when it was black men. You have to look at this and see that a lot of this is linked to some sort of internalised racism, a lot of internalised hate as well. When you talk about the economic, when you talk about when I said viewing black women as ag, when the black women got tired of the black man's ways. A lot of it is internalized racism, but however, it can be perpetuated sometimes by how we treat each other and discuss things with with each other. However, there's this story that of a writer from The Guardian, Tanika Smith, and she discusses her relationship with a white man, her being a black woman, and how she tackled the difficult issues of race. She herself, if you can see these articles, state that at first it was a topic that was avoided kind of glossed over but when the incident of George Floyd happened it became an issue that she couldn't avoid and I'll put a link into in my bio for you however she would say that at times she felt minimized diminished and belittled for her feelings when discussing race however the way she tackled it the way she looked past it the way her relationship was allowed to evolve and grow was having these difficult and intrusive and uncomfortable discussions about race. I do think when you are dating outside of your race and in an interracial relationship, to be quite frank with you, for race not to be an issue, it's something that involves honest, open-hearted, open-ear conversation. And you can see from Tamika Smith, in order to get into any sort of resolution, you must have those difficult conversations. You must have those 
subjects and conversations that must be discussed. If I'm being honest, a relationship, there should be no areas where you are afraid to discuss. Not everything needs to be discussed, but there should be no areas that you're afraid to discuss. And it seemed like Tanika Smith at that time was afraid to discuss her feelings about race, maybe in fears of offending her partner and her, and her partner was the same. However, their relationship was able to grow when they had those difficult conversations around George Floyd. But I do think anyone that is in an interracial relationship, if you could take one thing from this is have the discussion, understand each other's views about race. Sometimes some people's views about race are very ignorant and shallow because it's not something they particularly discuss or care for. And that's why they say, oh, I'm colorblind. Not necessarily that they are colorblind, it's just something that they're not comfortable discussing. But when you are uncomfortable and avoid something, it can leave room for ignorance. And if you want your relationship to grow and expand to new levels and bigger and deeper connections, cover those difficult discussions, especially when the world views you in a certain context. Discuss that context. I would say and I would argue that a point Dr. Uma made, check this one. Two, the black man wants the white woman to provide him with a degree of psychological validation. Only a low self-esteem having ass Negro would marry a white female in the first place because you feel that if I can get the white man's woman, then maybe that makes me feel a little bit more equal to the white, like man. white man. Black men get the white women that other white men genuinely do not want. You don't get the top of the line white women. You don't. You get leftovers. Look at most of our celebrities. They, don't, they did not marry women who came from the richest white families. Black money and white money don't behave the same. New black money will jump on any poor white girl and make her a billionaire, Tiger Woods. <laughs> rich white woman, rich white money doesn't operate that way, you see. I want to ask you something, Dr. Numa, for you, have you ever seen an interracial relationship that was acceptable to you? No interracial relationship is acceptable because we have too many black women who are unmarried. Black women are the largest population on the planet Earth. If you can't find one in America, get it from Africa. If you can't get it from Africa, go to the Caribbean, go to Canada, go to Europe. Why would a black man need to copulate, build a family with anything other than a black woman when you have so many black women available? It is an exercise in self-hatred. There's no way to get around it. it about the internalized racism, about the racism living deep within you, something I mentioned earlier. It can be a big link. And I do think for black women, that's a big part. And for black men, it's a big part. And myself, I'm not going to say yes, but I do think there was a part of that that played when I was so quick to dismiss all black women as ag and difficult because of a few situations that had gone awry. Some of it was to do with lack of accountability and it was easier to fall into the internalized racism tropes because they were tropes that I had believed, not believed actually, they are tropes that I had seen for so often. It was easier to accept those than to look inside myself and blame myself. Economically, I wouldn't say verbatim that it's only people beneath the black man that they date, but I would say that there's a lot of equal footing as opposed to when the white woman is dating the black man or the white man is dating the black woman. They seem to be at a very equal footing, if not sometimes the black man is above, generally speaking. I have rarely, if ever, seen where the black man is dating the white woman or the white man is dating the black woman and the white counterpart is far and ahead, economically ahead. And if there is, there's a definite power dynamic there and it seems to be more of a tricking and hoeing situation than a legitimate relationship where it's completely monogamous and we can't avoid this we cannot avoid this there is the fetish part of it we as black people men women women men however you want to look at it, we are highly fetishized black men and black women dr uma discusses this here syndrome it's almost a curse okay agreed exactly here's what i'm saying number one y'all date earlier when mm -hmm. you look good Statistics show it. When a black woman is attractive, she's sexualized earlier. Mm -hmm. She loses her virginity earlier. When you have a beautiful daughter, you got to be on her ass because mm -hmm. the hounds will be. Mm -hmm. But here's the. And then thirdly, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. We're the gods. Mm -hmm. We are the first man. Yeah. So naturally, white women are going to be attracted to us because we are the original man. Mm -hmm. Everyone is attracted to melanin. Yeah. It is liquid gold. We are so fetishized that we're sexualized early, way earlier than we ever should be, especially black women. So the outside world who are, and we cannot avoid this, victims of media's ideas and pushing and agendas, unfortunately sexualized. 
and unfortunately fetishize. And unfortunately, that makes people very curious to want to date us. But often it's not for, oh, you seem like a wonderful idea. It look, It's more like, hey, are you a mandingo? Hey, for black women, you're a super freak. You're this and you're that, you're whatever. I want to try that out. And it rarely and sadly sometimes is less about who you are, but what you represent. And I want to take you back to this point. Oh, that's why that's you have true. a liberal that's perspective. That's not true. That's not because you go home that's to a not white true. woman. Yes, but that's not true. I felt this way before I met my white girlfriend. So help me understand how you could be so passionate about the black. I'm cloth. not. I'm not. Pa I'm passionate. I'm, I'm an objective thinker. I don't. If something makes sense, so you have no loyalty to the black community. No, I do have. I probably employ more blacks than you. Okay, so help me understand that you employ more blacks than me, but you go home to a white woman. Why you don't have a black woman? Because I fell in love with a white woman, not a black. Why didn't you fall in love with a black? I woman? did. I fell in love with a black woman. We broke up. Okay, and why didn't you find it fall in love with another black woman? I did that too. We broke up. Okay. Oh, and why didn't you get another one and another one and another one until you found the right one? Because I, I met a white woman that I fell in love with, and that's the person. And I you're went being to disingenuous about that's something. Not true. And let me tell you what you're true. being disingenuous about. True. Romance mm -hmm. is a function of focus and opportunity. If I want to date an Asian, mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself around Asian women True. so I can find one. True. If I want to date a Latino, I'm going to put myself around Latino women mm -hmm. so I can date one. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to marry a black woman, you would have put yourself around black women so you can find one. So how did you end up with the Caucasian? No disrespect to her. No, not at all. What I'm telling you is the places that I go socially are not just mon mon mono. Mono. Listen, so what? Like, I went I'm to a white whoa, college, whoa, whoa. white college, white college, I'm white answer. job. Listen, I never bunny hopped. Listen to my question. Let me answer you. That wasn't my priority. My priority wasn't, yo, I'm not closed off to dating Latino women. I'm not closed off to dating Asian women. I'm not closed off to dating white women. So again, in my search for romance, all of those things were on the but table. But you for do me. understand that by not being I mean, with a black I'm, woman, I'm you undermine the opinion. success of the black community. That's your opinion. That's my opinion. Then tell me how the black community benefits from you having a white woman. If if I if I lend to the financial up up uh, uplifting uplifting of that community, one. That's one thing. Two, if I'm helping to educate the people in that particular community, th that's a benefit. Three. Does not your white woman benefit more from your economics than any black person? Yeah, probably. Exactly. So, so why can't they both be mutually beneficial? You, you want to know why? Because she belongs to the group that is responsible for the historical oppression of your race. So, so why would you voluntarily go over and marry into that? Because when you marry the woman, whoa, whoa, whoa. you don't just marry the woman or date the woman. You're dating her community and her culture. So and given the history of us and them, why would you dare align yourself with that if you care about us? Let me ask you a question. I want you to, I want you to let me get my yes, answers yes, out. Go ahead. So, one thing Umar said here really hit me in a flash, in, in a boom in some ways. Love is love. I do agree with that, but it is an object of your focus. But I do disagree with him on his larger point that you can't date someone outside the, your race because they need to get rid of their privilege that they have. I feel like, how do they do that? Is that a possibility? But one thing I will say, and it's more of a closing point, I don't actually have the answer to it. I do believe love is love. And I do believe some people fall for people genuinely. But the question I'll ask is, can love be love in the context of caste, oppression, racism, internalized racism, externalized racism? Is love allowed to be love in that context? Is there an agenda that is trying to dilute the black race? And people who are not from the black race may view that as mad and obscene, but you have to understand that the community in which I'm from, we've been victims to so many different things, so many different things that were called cuckoo conspiracies. Can you blame us? We're always fighting and feeling that we're fighting for our existence and our purpose in this world. Can you blame us? Again, I hope you enjoyed this discussion. I hope this is an insight into interracial relationships and how they expand and how they are and how they work. It's such a complicated web. I'll probably revisit in the future. Thank you for joining me. My lips have gone dry. My mouth has gone dry. I love this episode. I hope you lot loved it too. I hope you enjoy it too. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'll see you in the new year. I'll see you next year. <laughs> what a bad joke. <laughs> Maybe I'm a, I don't know. Let me not say that. I don't want to say it too many times. It might demonetize me. But hey, enjoy it. I hope you take some of the things that Tanika Smith said about her relationships. I hope you take some of the points that I made and bring it up to your partner. If you want to date out your sage, your race, look into these things. See if, it, if they trigger you. See if they, and why they trigger you. And is it something you can work past or is it something that you can't work past? Look into it.
These are conversations just to find out more about yourself than anything. None of us really know where we're going in the end, so none of us can judge. With that, I'll say good night. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm out. She's biracial. She's a biracial girl. She's biracial. She's a biracial girl. She's